Now, if you're struggling with your slice, I have got the video for you. I have this one simple distinction between what the right elbow does and what the right wrist does that can help you to get rid of that slice once and for all. Let's go and get started. All right, guys, a slice, something that is really plagues a lot of people's golf games. Now, I got my flight scope out here. It's gonna measure what happens here at the golf ball. And I'm gonna try to go ahead and hit a slice. I'm gonna feel like my right hand is a little bit more on top of the club or turned to the, to the left side. My right elbow pit is a little bit more in, or the back of my elbow would be out this way, and my right shoulder is a little bit more on top. Now, if I do those things, that is a perfect recipe to hit a great big slice. There we go, so that one started down the left side, sliced across the ball. Wasn't the worst shot in the world. I could definitely live with it. I didn't hit it that bad. But for those of you who are hitting that slice that just keeps on going that way, sometimes it'll really exaggerate and go into the woods. That can be so frustrating. So on that one, if we're looking at the details here, we're gonna see that the path was 13.4 to the left. That means the club's swing direction was 13.4 degrees to the left. This stick is basically straight ahead, so I was swinging in that direction. My face was open to my path, so my face was opened up, kind of pointing straight ahead. That got that slice spin on there. Didn't, like I said, it wasn't the worst drive in the world. 115 club head speed, that was pretty decent. Uh, 250 carry, 270 total. Once we start to straighten this out though, you're gonna see those numbers pick up a lot. So that may not look the worst, but in reality, that's cutting a lot of distance off. That's no different than the guy who normally drives at 200 that hits the big slice and it goes 170 when they could be hitting the draw that goes 210 or 220, hitting a lot more square. And here's the real key with this. And it takes a, took me a long time to realize what pro golfers, the best golfers in the world are doing to get that club with some forward shaft lean to square up that face. And it has to do with the difference between your forearm, so your radius and your ulna. And if you feel, go ahead and grab your wrist here. There's two bones. You can feel two knobs kind of sticking out there on your wrist. As you turn, just like you're turning a doorknob to the left, you'll feel those two bones kind of roll over each other. That's your radius and your ulna turning that way. If I go the other way, turn it to the right, that's the radius and ulna going this way. Now what most people tend to do is they keep the wrist, so my flat inside of my wrist, lined up with the inside of my elbow. So that would be a wide open club face. You can see here, if I hold that up, if my wrist is flat and my elbow is flat, that is wide open. If I was to swing a golf ball, swing a golf club like that, that would be this move. It's wide open. And now I would hit that ball so far to the right, I would just hit every single one of them out of bounds. So instinctively, like, because we're all good athletes, we say, I don't want to do that. You know, your first couple swings ever playing golf, you, you hit them to the right and you say, that's, that's no good. So what am I going to do? Well, I don't change the relationship between my wrist and my forearm but you do come over the top, get that right shoulder up high. Now you've squared up that inside of the elbow and the inside of the wrist to come more over the top. Now the ball starts more on line, but then you still have that big slice. So if we wanna do it like the pros are doing this, we wanna go ahead and release that wrist different than what's happening with the elbow. So now let's grab the elbow. So we talked about how the wrist can rotate this way or that way. Let's talk about the elbow. As I'll rotate my elbow out to the side, then that's gonna be my shoulder coming on top. Now my elbow pit is turned in. If I tuck that under, like you're seeing with a lot of pros do in their swing, my elbow pit is up, my elbow is pointing more toward my right hip. Now the key from there is keep this the same. Go ahead and grab your, your right forearm up here by your elbow pit, keep that the same, and now go ahead and rotate your wrist to the left. You'll notice that you can rotate your wrist separate of what your elbow is doing. So I can rotate that wrist to close the club face if I held that up again, that's that open club face. As I rotate my wrist, not my elbow, that lets the face release and turn on over. If I want some forward shaft lean, I can even have that wrist back and I can still rotate it either direction. So that would look a lot like this. Now the reason that's so important to have the wrist different than the elbow is that if I wanna swing from the inside, I have to have my elbow in. If my elbow comes out, my shoulder pops up, I'm gonna swing to the left across the ball with my elbow pit in, my shoulders in, I have a tilt away from the golf ball, and now I can swing from the inside. But again, the key to that is, I have to be able to square that face up while swinging from the inside. That's the one thing that separates being able to hit a draw from not being able to hit a draw, or one of the main things. So what I want you to do here, let's go ahead and keep that elbow tucked in on the downswing, feel like you're coming from the inside, and I want you to stop about halfway down. Look at the club face and see how it's perpendicular to the ground. Now, let's go ahead and close that club face down. 
you'll see how my left wrist bows at the same time. Let's go to contact and let's see how that elbow pit is in, but now my face is squared up. Imagine the palm of your hand being the club face. As that comes through, that has to rotate to square that club face up. So if I exaggerate that, I can hit two or three shots here for you and I'll show you what's happening. If my, again, the incorrect way, if my elbow pit is out, my elbow comes up, my path goes to the left. That's gonna be that slice. That was actually a pretty decent one there. I did all those draw swings. I, I couldn't get one to slice very much, but that's a little bit of a slice. My path was moving to the left. The direction my club was swinging to is to the left. If I tuck that elbow in, but I don't release the hand, now my path goes to the right. You'll see this ball start to the right, but then it slices even farther to the right. That's what most people struggle with. The last piece, let's get that in, and now it's release that hand. Feel like your hand is coming around the outside of the ball with that elbow staying in as you're doing that, and you're gonna be able to get that ball to draw every single time. So again, elbow in, feel like the hand releases over top of the golf ball. I'm really gonna feel a nice big draw here. There we go, started that one down the right center. Over exaggerated, it drew right back into the middle of the fairway though. Probably 15, maybe even 20 yard draw on that one. And let's look at the numbers on that one and see what the difference was between the face and path and distance. Instead of being 13 to the left like the beginning of the video, that one's nine to the right. So probably a little overdone, but that's good to start out. My club head speed was one mile an hour slower. I think before it carried 250, that one carried 294, swinging one mile an hour slower. My total distance was 318.8, before it was like 270. So that's 50 yards more distance, swinging one mile an hour slower on there. And just to prove that this is pretty easy to do, once you get the motion down, I'm gonna tuck the elbow in again, release that hand. So I'm doing this, I'm feeling like the club is turning on over as I'm hitting the golf ball without letting that elbow pop out. The elbow has to stay in when I'm doing that. And now I can hit that draw consistently. There you go, again, over exaggerated a little bit, really got that to sling some more. But the beginning, 115 miles an hour swing speed and 250 carry, that was 118. I swung a little bit faster on that one, carried at 299. Total distance was 333. Let's just for fun, go ahead and really rip one just to see what we can do if we go all out. So again, the same idea, same characteristics. I'm just gonna try to swing a little bit harder on this one, see if we can get closer to that 120 miles per hour. My ball's scared, it's running away already. All right, so I'm gonna get a big shoulder turn, really let it rip. There we go, killed that one. That was the best one so far. Again, kept that elbow in, released that hand. Got a nice draw on there, nice and high. Club head speed is 119.5, definitely the best so far. So I swung a little harder at that one. 311 carry, 345 total distance. So I don't think I'm gonna do much better than that. Now, for those of you that are working through the top speed golf system, this is really gonna tie in very well with when we talk about lag and the move. So basically when I shallow this club out, my elbow pit has to be in in the move and I have to shallow this club out if I want a good amount of lag in the downswing. So keeping that elbow pin elbow in relates directly with the move and lag that we're talking about in the top speed golf system. Now the straight line release is when we let that club go and we have to let that right wrist go to release the club. So I'm feeling like that right wrist still releases, turns on over when I'm getting into the straight line release. So whether you're working on the move whether you're working on lag or the straight line release, this ties in with all three of those. So what's the next piece for this? We talk about in the top speed golf system, the moves. We shallow out this club to get it on a flatter swing plane. All the great pros are doing this. And you'll notice when I do that, my elbow is being tucked from the inside. So if you can pair that together, shallowing out this club with keeping that elbow tucked and then squaring up the face, that's gonna be that great one-two punch that's gonna make this completely automatic. Now I've got a great bonus video for you that's gonna go over exactly how to do that. We call it the tennis racket drill, 
I'm playing a preview of that here in a second. Just click the card up on the screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that. And we'll really solidify this turning that hand in. And this tenant jacket drill is one of the best ones I have on that. Let's go ahead and get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked about worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time,